Okay, in this video, we're gonna take a look at finch beak size on an island called Daphne Major or Daphne Major, if you're cool. And you can see this beautiful background here. This, see, this is the Galapagos Archipelago. I think I'm saying that right area. And you might've heard this story before. It's very famous. Uh, Darwin did some amazing studies here. So we're gonna try to clear up a few things about this particular area. So let's take a look. So uh, most of this is pretty easy to understand. If you've looked at other examples of natural selection in action, for example, the peppered moth story or antibiotic resistance developing in bacteria as well, especially tuberculosis, the bacteria that causes tuberculosis. A lot of these examples are pretty logical, so this one's going to sound pretty logical as well too, so let's make sure it makes sense. So we're looking at finches on these particular islands, the Daphne Major Islands, and they can eat seeds. And you can see down here you have different types of uh, beak size and the beak size actually, you know, dep depending on the type of food that's available, it could be an advantage or a, a disadvantage. So this makes sense. Big beaks are better adapted to larger seeds. Larger seeds will have harder shells, therefore more difficult to break. If you have a skinny little wimpy beak, you aren't going to be able to access these seeds as much. So you're going to go for some of the smaller seeds with softer shells. So those with small beaks are better with small seeds, which is a nice way of saying they suck at breaking open big seed shells. So it just so happens that during droughts, during dry spells, you can see in this graph right here, during dry spells, there are fewer smaller seeds available. And therefore, at the, as, the, as, as a result of that, finches with smaller beaks decrease in number. Why is that? It's because those beaks, those finches that have smaller beaks aren't able to access some of those seeds with and because the seeds are less available, they don't get enough nutrition. If they don't get enough nutrition, then they end up dying off, not able to reproduce. And so in the next generation, the next few generations, uh, bigger beaks become more common. And so people who are studying this over time will see that the mean beak size will actually increase as a result because these guys are dying off. Okay the genes that contribute to smaller beaks are decreasing in frequency. So the allele frequency is actually decreasing for the smaller beaks. Okay, continuing on. After bouts of heavy rain, a lot of small seeds become available again. So the opposite effect is going to happen. Now, due to variation, I mean, not all of these guys have been knocked out. There's still a few with some smaller beaks carrying the genes for the smaller beaks. But because smaller seeds become available, these guys are more successful well, they're able to access food, and if they're able to access food, they can gain energy, they can reproduce, and then pass on their genes to the next generation. So what overall the story is saying is that depending on the types of seeds that are available, that can have an effect on the average uh, allele frequencies that exist, and so that could therefore change what we see in the actual physical traits or phenotypes of these finches, which is basically change over time. And this is a mechanism of uh, natural selection. This is evolution by natural selection. And it's, it is yet one other additional example of evolution in action.